There's no doubt that machines are one of man's greatest inventions, and those used in factories are among the most impressive of all. With their fluid movements, these machines attain a level of perfection that's more visually satisfying than pretty much anything else in the world. So, from mind-melting, metal-molding, the magical candy machines, strap on that hard hat and join me as we take a tour of some of the most satisfying factory machines that do amazing things. Everyone loves a good makeover. There are few things more satisfying than watching something transform so drastically that it's completely unrecognizable. And the particular type of machine I'm about to show you is a master of total transformation. Computer numerically controlled machines, more commonly known as CNC machines, are electromechanical devices that carry out programmed modifications to items. These devices can range from plasma cutters to lathes like this one, which rapidly rotates cylindrical metal pieces using a cutting arm to carve slots, holes, and details, fashioning complex mechanical parts. While that might sound kind of complicated, reaping satisfaction from watching these machines at work is incredibly simple. Just check it out. The final result is a shining example of what can only be described as the perfect combination between practicality and visual perfection. There are lots of other types of CNC machines, but each type is super sharp when it comes to delivering a show of metal manufacturing satisfaction. Just watch this 5-axis CNC machine in action to see what I mean. While a car wheel may seem like a pretty ordinary object, it's safe to say there's something extraordinary about the way one like this is made. The rapidly spinning drill column carves through steel or aluminum like butter. Machinery isn't often associated with beauty, but there's no denying that watching a CNC machine at work is as mesmerizing as any piece of fine art, and the incredible transformations are the icing on the cake. When ancient man first began regularly using metal more than 10,000 years ago, it changed the course of humanity forever. Prior to the rise of machines, shaping metal was a manual process that required not only strength and stamina, but skill. And ancient blacksmiths would heat metal with fire and strike it with a hammer until the desired shape was achieved. Thanks to the Industrial Revolution of the 18th and 19th centuries, Forging has become a worldwide industry aided by modern machinery, including automation, robotics, and other electronic controls. And thanks to all that, it's now more satisfying to watch than ever. That impressive display showcases the power of press forging, a method of shaping heated metal by gradually applying hydraulic pressure. Just look at the way the cooler, hardened outer layer shatters off. That shattering is wonderfully common in a process like this. And when it comes to size, these machines don't discriminate. Check this out.
Forging presses like this can deliver a driving force equivalent to 50,000 tons to squeeze the largest hunks of molten metal into its required shape. And while it may look like the machines do all the work, sometimes trusty old humans are required to help work pieces take shape, though not without protective equipment. Seeing as molten steel is often forged at upwards of 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. These crazy temperatures are necessary, though. At around this heat level, steel molecules gain enough energy that they're temporarily prevented from crystallizing, leaving the metal soft and malleable without becoming a full liquid. The result is the squishy-looking slabs of hot metal we see here. Anyone else weirdly tempted to poke it? But forging isn't just burly and practical. It can be fancy, too. This machine was specifically made for rolling iron into perfect little snail swirls in an endlessly satisfying process the Nargesa PC-16 machine makes decorative metal parts for gates and metal furniture. Though if you ask me, you can keep the final products. Just let me watch them being made. And while forging machines strike while the iron is hot, this next machine is ice cold in every way. My God. God, so smooth. A far cry from the cloudy tap water cubes in most home freezers, the Bare Bones Ice Company specializes in cutting crystal clear ice cubes. Companies like Bare Bones Ice use a special industrial freezer called a Kleinbell machine, a large ice block making machine. These deep freezers have special pumps that circulate the water inside ensuring that any minerals and oxygen bubbles will be forced to the surface during the freezing process, preventing them accumulating inside the ice. The result is a perfectly clear block of the finest ice money can buy. When paired with a cocktail, these crystal clear ice cubes look positively mouthwatering, though the seamless slicing action remains the tastiest part of all. From ice cubes to ice cream now, the only thing more satisfying than scarfing down an ice cream cone on a hot summer's day is watching one being made on an industrial scale. Don't believe me? Take a look. Each wafer starts out with a squirt of molten chocolate to line the bottom of the cone. Then a whipped dollop of soft white ice cream is added before bathing in the factory's very own chocolate river. If you thought Willy Wonka's chocolate river was a work of fiction, think again, as this sweet stream is very much real and each dunk is as mouthwatering as the last. Still hungry for more? How about a whole tub and another and another and another? There's no way of freezing time at ice cream factories like this one, and if there's any delay, melting can occur. So, quick and efficient machines are essential to producing the best quality cold stuff possible. But with multi-nozzle, deep-chilled, frosty machines like this, rapid ice cream production is as easy as a nice, cool breeze. If all that talk of ice cream has left you with quite the chill, let me turn your attention to some hot pots. It's time for some instant satisfaction with one of the most convenient hot foods known to man. Ramen, baby. Worldwide, about 95 billion packs of ramen instant noodles are eaten every year so large-scale factory production is needed to keep up with the never-ending demand for oodles of noodles. At this factory, which specializes in ready-to-go, just-add-water pot noodles, the fresh noodles are portioned before going through a large-scale deep fryer, 
that reduces the noodle's water content until they reach an extreme state of dehydration. Then it's pot and time. Then there's a generous stack of delicious noodles placed into every pot, alongside some dried vegetables. Things get saucy on another machine, as robotic suction arms transfer each individual sauce packet into every noodle-filled pot before finally being sealed with a peel-off lid. And the satisfaction levels of watching these ramen-making machines is just as fulfilling as a steaming pot of ramen, but even easier to enjoy. After those noodles, I'd say that's enough sodium for a lifetime. Maybe we should turn our attention to something a little healthier, and trust me, what I have in mind will make you feel so much better. Check it out. While we're told it takes just one apple a day to keep the doctor away, this swift-handed factory worker isn't taking any chances. A bona fide apple-peeling pro. With a simple bit of suction, rotation, and a blade to peel, the skin flies off in ribbons. And if that apple peeling wasn't enough to strike your core, how about some pineapples? Despite its sophisticated level of satisfaction, this lean, mean peeling machine is simple in its parts. After a slightly brutal impaling, the pineapple dances around a spinning steel pole, and it's just as sexy as it sounds. The serrated scooper cleaving strips of tough pineapple skin off like it's nothing. Okay, okay, you're right, we have to see that one more time. Hot damn! Useful and, more importantly, insanely satisfying to watch. You're probably going to have a hard time installing such a mammoth machine into your average kitchen. But all is not lost. More practical sources of pineapple satisfaction might be closer and more attainable than you think. This public-use pineapple peeler brings the factory to the supermarket fruit aisle, allowing customers to peel their fruit before purchase. The pineapple peeling machine lets anyone play with factory-level speed and precision, the machine being calibrated to skin, core, and chop and often difficult to prepare fruit with absolute ease. And all your rings end up neatly presented in a cup, ready to go. Truly a thing of beauty. From peeling pineapples to molting melons now, feast your eyes. And just when you thought these fruit peelers couldn't get any better, look at the length of that initial strip of melon skin. This heavy-duty peeler has no time for manners when prepping watermelons, and swiftly chops off the ends after finishing with its peeling perfection. Harsh, but fair. But what happens next to our factory-prepped watermelons? Well, see for yourself. While watermelons are one of the most refreshing fruits you can feed your belly, this simultaneous slicing action is sure to quench any thirsty eyes with a hydrating dose of satisfaction. Like many satisfying factory features, heavy-duty fruit peelers are yet another cog in the machine in the works to eliminate the need for hand power. But despite the continuous rise of machines, human hands do still exist, for now. 
and for as long as they do, they'll occasionally need some protection. But funnily enough, even the manufacture of hand protection can be insanely satisfying. They say many hands make light work, and this rubber glove factory certainly has its finger on the pulse of productivity. Showering each mold with liquefied rubber, each glove-to-be is slowly coated with a drizzle or ceremoniously dunked into the mix, and each process is like a massage for your brain. With rubber mitts in just about every color of the rainbow you can imagine, this glove factory is sure to leave you with your eyes and hands full of satisfaction. Despite the magic of machinery, you might be thinking that there are some things that can only be done by hand, particularly when it comes to decorative elements. There's no way a machine could achieve that kind of creative genius, right? Well, this next clip suggests differently. This squish-tacular display which may have just overloaded my satisfaction meter, shows off the art of pad printing, and it's about as satisfying as it gets. Just get a load of that jiggle. Pad printing, also known as tampography or tampo printing, involves a flexible silicone pad being used to transfer ink from an etched base plate onto the product. Pad printing is used in many different industries on a variety of products, and you'd be surprised what they can produce. With just five stamps, each adding its own layer of color, this machine has created its very own work of art, and the results are truly moving. While pad printing is pretty impressive, there's one type of printing that might have to take the crown. And indeed, a crown would be suitable given what this next machine creates. Check this out. printing, also known as additive manufacturing, is the process of printing three-dimensional objects. Like 2D inkjet printers, 3D printers need computer-generated digital files to tell the machine what to produce. But while 2D printers use inkjets to print onto paper, 3D printers use computer-controlled extruders that draw out layer upon layer of meltable thermoplastic filament until an entire object is formed. It's pretty amazing to watch objects seemingly materialize out of thin air like that. I mean, can you imagine showing something like this to someone from the medieval times? You'd be burned as a witch for sure. But while 3D printers are great for building plastic, computer-generated models, how about using one to build a full-size house? Well, it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. In fact, it's already being done around the world. Check it out. The 3D printing method for a house similarly depends on a computer-controlled guideline, only this time it involves an elaborate structure housing a huge robotic arm with a nozzle on the end that squirts out a specialized cement. The cement is printed according to a pre-programmed route based on blueprints detailing an architect's design, creating a multi-tiered cake of new real estate. Not only is watching this house become a reality insanely satisfying for the eyes, but it's also good for developers' wallets too. Because of the reductions in raw materials and, more importantly, labor, 
3D printed buildings could cost between 20 and 40% less to build than those built using traditional methods. But just because they cost less does not mean you're not getting the quality, and some of these houses are at the very height of architectural design. While those 3D printed houses might be a little too modern for an old school picket fence, let's turn our attention to some fence making machines regardless. With all the twists and turns you're more than happy to see coming, watching this chicken wire fence come to life is a tasty bowl of chicken soup for the soul. I could watch that twirling wire waltz all day, but trust me, the best is yet to come. Inventing new and efficient machines is a game that factories will never stop playing, but some machines are already game, set, and match. This factory has certainly aced the production of tennis balls, and the process is as mesmerizing to watch as a real-life game. The iconic hue of the tennis ball is officially called optic yellow, and in the first step of its manufacture, long sheets of this bright felt are cut into dog bone shapes and compressed before their edges are lined with white glue and wrapped around a rubber ball core. Then, after a preliminary inspection, the ball's rubber core and felt are pressure cooked to bond them permanently. What emerges are the fully formed balls tennis players know and love. From tennis serves to table service now, this robot waiter suction machine can prepare plates and dishes with no fuss or breakages whatsoever, all without ever needing a single tip. And what's even better is how satisfying it is to watch. This particular one is preparing prepackaged dishware into the ready to use sets that you see in home stores. And honestly, I think the two suction arms make a great team minus the witty banter and camaraderie of human workmates, of course. And all that empty dishware looks kind of lonely. I'm thinking we need to make something tasty to fill it up with pronto. Italian food has been dubbed the world's favorite cuisine, but you've probably been too busy scarfing it down your face to ever wonder how it's manufactured on an industrial scale. Luckily, I've got you covered. Feast your eyes on this. Pasta extruders like this are machines used for creating different pasta shapes by squeezing pasta dough through specifically shaped attachments, kind of like a Play-Doh hair salon. Watching each piece come to life and be sliced to size is absolutely mesmerizing, and just as much fun as it would be to plate yourself up a devil portion. As I'm sure you're glad to hear, the pasta perfection we saw a little earlier isn't over yet. Get ready for your next course. It's going to be a filling one. One of the most versatile pastas out there, ravioli, is an all-in-one mealtime wonder. The process of making this particular pasta is split into two parts in mass production. First, a mix of flour, eggs, and water is churned and kneaded to create the perfect pasta dough, which is funneled out of the machine into roll upon roll of pasta parchment. These pasta sheet rolls are then fed into another machine, and this is where the real magic happens. 
This purveyor of pasta wizardry can print line after line of perfectly filled ravioli like the most delicious photo booth of all time, producing around 660 pounds of ravioli per hour. Finally, a machine that can keep up with my pasta portion sizes. Now, to create pasta on such a scale, you need a lot of eggs. So, it makes sense for us to see just how eggs are prepared into a usable form on an industrial scale. Luckily, when it comes to shows of satisfaction, the egg has cracked it. This excellent machine was specifically designed to crack and separate eggs. After a cracking start, courtesy of two vacuum suction pads, the eggy innards move down a steel slide and on to meet their fateful separation. The cracked eggs move down a special funnel with a thin opening for the egg white to slip through and into its own bucket at the bottom of the machine. The yolks, held on the conveyor thanks to their thickness, put on their own show, slowly slipping down the final stretch of the funnel and finally plopping into their own bucket, ready to be used for whatever yolky duties destiny has in store for them. Returning to some more of Italy's finest exports now, pizza is one of the greatest pleasures life has to offer. And while there's no doubt that handmade fresh is best, watching this next clip of mass-produced pizza being made will take your appreciation up a few notches. Check it out. This all-in-one pizza production line begins with a tasty look at mass-scale pizza cutting, topped off with some satisfying circular sauce spreading action, and uh, I don't know about you, but I'm suddenly hungry again. If all that pizza has left you in a carb-fueled daze, then it must be time for something a little sweeter. While Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory remains a work of fiction, there are hundreds of very real candy and chocolate factories out there, and thankfully, getting a sneak peek inside isn't merely the stuff of pure imagination. It's very real and very satisfying. While many of Wonka's magnificent machines are futuristic to say the least, real-life candy machines were really kicked into gear in the early 20th century with the invention of the taffy pulling machine in 1900. Taffy's unique texture is achieved through the long process of pulling and stretching a mixture of corn syrup, sugar, and butter after it's been heated to around 260 degrees Fahrenheit and then cooled slightly. In the early days of taffy production, confectioners would pull the taffy by hand over a hook on the wall. But thanks to the power of machinery, we can watch taffy being pulled with all the satisfaction and none of the elbow grease. Most taffy pulling machines have three different arms that the confectioner wraps the candy around. Then the mechanical arms move in perfect unison and aerate the taffy, forming tiny air bubbles throughout the candy giving it its lightweight and chewy texture. The most satisfactory part of taffy pulling, though, has to be the color transformation of the candy, which seemingly comes out of nowhere, as seen here with a mouth-watering transformation from strips of red and white to a shiny bubblegum pink. There's no sweeter feeling than watching all this candy being made. Well, aside from the candy itself. And it's not just taffy machines that work with real confection. It's time to take a trip to the chocolate room. Unlike Wonka's factory, there's no risk of any serious health code violations here, just some sights so darn tasty they should be illegal.
Armed with some truly tasty technology, the Lindt Chocolate Factory certainly knows its stuff when it comes to Easter bunnies. Decadent chocolate is poured into huge devices made specifically for rotating the melted chocolate to coat the bunny mold. The result is a perfectly smooth, hollow chocolate bunny that's nothing short of mouthwatering. Wrapping a Lindt chocolate bunny seems quite the task, but the factory has a machine specifically designed for that too. A special sticker machine seals the deal with an oh-so-satisfying stamp before being shipped off to be enjoyed by chocolate lovers all over the world. All right, that's it. I'm too hungry. Chocolate, anyone? So, just before I go gorge myself into a coma, which of these factory machines satisfied you the most? Are you aware of even more satisfying industrial processes? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.